oh my god, no. I'm going to not do this if you keep saying shit like that. <laughs> it's just metaphysically, I, I relate back to Marie Laveau. You know, she was the most powerful sorceress of her time. She was in a court case, and she went, he went to fix a piece of paper, and she just touched a piece of paper, and he went to move it, and then he started stut stuttering, stuttering, and lost the case. The first aeon, I was the great spirit. In the second aeon, men knew me as the horn god, pangenitor, panthage. In the third aeon, I was the dark one. The devil. In the fourth aeon, men knew me not, for I am the hidden one. In the fifth aeon, I appear before you as Baphomet, the god before all gods who shall endure to the end of the earth. In this new aeon, I appear to you as C. M. Um. Imagine that there is a brilliant white light just above. Is commentary on the magic art. In the years of the final form, in the dawn of terrestrial birth. Oh, that was very educational. Now magic will take place. Don't be fooled by what I just said. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. I'm your host, Swing Low Magellan Kennedy, and this is Chaos Magic News, the only podcast that's working on the backside of time. You sun raw thing. Joining me, as always, is my comedic co-host, Amin Kotap. H how you doing, Kotap? How are you, my fellow king? Oh, God, no. Oh, no. No, this is going to be problematic. <laughs> we cannot do this. <laughs> I know you got an Erica Badu joke coming too. We just just can it. Just pipe it. I love Erica Badu, so you know. Me too, though. Like honestly, I didn't know who Erica Badu was until I watched the Chappelle Show and this amazing goddess of a woman perform a song that I I didn't realize I even liked that kind of music, and it just blew me away. Yeah, yeah, in a weird way, right? Because that was that was at that formative time in my life where my tastes were really developing. I remember hearing Kanye for the first time on the Chappelle show and killer Mike and common yeah, killer Mike too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Amazing stuff. Oh man. Ugh. Anyway. So <laughs> just derail the episode right off the rip with my love of, uh, miss Erica Badu. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, we have kind of two opening topics this time because someone in our discord we have a discord go join Woo! you too can get an opening topic that gets brushed over because we don't have good enough answers for it but someone asked about what the weirdest paradigms we'd ever operated in were so i kind of wanted to touch on that briefly and then we'll go into the rest of our um opening discussion which is going to be on something else entirely so just quick question then for you like what, what what's the weirdest paradigm you've ever operated in well, okay, the, the problem with this answer is that I can tell you what the weirdest one is, but it's a very long, long story. And it's, it's one that I've, I brushed on briefly where I'd said, oh, eventually we'll have an episode where we talk about this, but I don't want to talk about it just yet. But essentially, it, it turned into a lot of everything is connected, aliens, Lovecraft entities living under the ground the serious star, the ghost of Robert Anton Wilson knows all of this and he's trying to get me to realize it like that kind of stuff where it was just, right, yeah, yeah. just, and, and then it all somehow relates back to ancient Crete because Crete is like one of the oldest civilizations that exist, like that sort of thing. And I, I talked about it a little bit, but for me, I, I describe that as the time that I almost drove myself crazy. So it's like, it was a very, it, that was a very bizarre time. As far as other like wonky or just sort of odd paradigms, I mean, there, there's probably a lot that you can work in. I mean, I, it, it probably deals more with what do you consider a paradigm and what do you consider just sort of a motif that you're working with? Because I've done stuff with fiction where... I've had correspondence between me and fictional characters or 
I've even made the argument where I believed that the reason that fictional characters will show up when you're doing magical workings is the exact same reason that gods will show up. And it's because they're all fiction and that magic is really just using uh, the creations of the imagination to reach out and do stuff. So I guess that's kind of a weird paradigm. Yeah, yeah. See, my issue with this question is like the same thing I have with most of discussing the weird parts, quote unquote, of chaos magic is that I feel like when you're doing them, none of them really feel that weird. Well, I think when you break them all down to their bare bones, most of the yeah, most of them are are weird. Yeah, in some kind of way. Yeah, well, it's but it, they, you know, when when you're in them, they don't feel weird. No, not at all. Yeah, I think when we were briefly touching on it earlier in the Discord chat between you and me, the two that I talked about were doing Twin Peaks magic, where I kind of set myself in a paradigm that like I was just taking symbolism from the show and you know the weird dale cooper kind of strange tibetan stuff like throwing the rock and all that kind of crap i was just doing stuff like that and you know it's like you know it's it's no it's it's kind of weird it's you know surrealist you know having weird dreams doing stuff like that but i don't really feel like it's that weird in the grand scheme of things because you can just be like oh well it's a tv show that has like weird supernatural themes so i was doing magic from it oh well you know and the other one Go ahead. I, was saying, I, I thought of one that kind of sticks out to me, but you go ahead, finish your thought. The other one that I did is more of a recent thing because I reread Cerebus. And if you don't know about Cerebus the Aardvark, you ain't going to learn about it tonight. <laughs> I don't want to give you a whole synopsis of that thing. It's too goddamn long. Just know that during a certain point in the later chapters of Cerebus, Cerebus decides to start doing uh, biblical analysis. And he just comes up with a lot of interesting, weird kind of ideas about God that are really sexist, depending on how you want to read them. But I was rereading that and I started trying to think about taking those ideas seriously in some sort of way and wondering what that would mean for your magic and all that sort of stuff. Well, and the other thing, too, is that these aren't just funny ideas that Dave Sim came up with to make his comic book Aardvark say. David Sim had a huge breakdown and it led to like a spiritual revival for him where he created his own sort of amalgamation of the different Abrahamic religions Mm -hmm. and Cerebus becomes a mouthpiece for these ideas. Yes and no. I feel like having reread it and heard Sim talk about it before Cerebus is kind of like a dumber version of it because, you know, he's big, dumb, aardvark, barbarian (laughs) guy. That sounds like what you say when it's like, I know these sound really stupid, but my ideas actually aren't (laughs) stupid. It's just I meant them to sound dumber. (laughs) That's yeah, I can see that. But yeah, I guess the the only reason I don't want to devote the only reason I don't want to devote the whole opening discussion to this is because I don't feel like it's going to it's not. You know, it's kind of kooky and fun, but I don't have as much to say about it as I probably do other things just because like, you know, like I said, my problem with that question just turns into all of it's fucking weird. Yeah, it's like the idea of because when you break it down, most pretty much everything will fall into a couple different models like energy model, psychological model, information model, spirit model. That covers about 90 percent of any paradigm you could work in. It's just the specifics of how these things work right yeah you get into various interesting weird kind of combinations of those maybe or you're using one of those models in a very like different kind of way like you know you're doing a spirit model or something like that and it's like you're invoking fucking you know the marvel pantheon and all that kind of nonsense right right you can do some weird stuff within those things but when it comes down to analyzing them, they all end up in some very similar places and it's more of technical differences. You know, I think I made a joke about, um, you know, I don't want to talk about this because relatively my stuff is pretty tame. Cause I know motherfuckers doing like strawberry shortcake magic, <laughs> but even that, like, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. the, the way you end up using those things. Isn't that different than other paradigms. It's just sort of, you know, it, like I said, it's, it's aesthetics really in my mind. Yeah. Which is probably why I don't vibe so much with like 
fiction, quote unquote, or like maybe pop culture magic, just because it's like when how it ends up getting used doesn't seem that different to me than other sorts of more quote unquote serious mythic and religious ideas in magic. And, you know, it's just those vibe better with me because I feel more believable trying to get results doing stuff based on, I don't know, somebody that something that got prayed to in an ancient time than I do fucking Superman. Mm-hmm. You know, I've done stuff to get like weird pop culture results, but I have to work harder at it and I'm not about working hard. <laughs> well, um, I, I guess so. I guess so no one feels like they're not getting something weird. I can tell you I did the techniques that Carlos Castaneda describes in his Don Juan books. I did those when I was at work and I basically had the experience of every building and road and everything that was sort of linking this whole facility together as a uh, a series of energetic organs and that the movement of people between all of it was uh we we were all like the little energetic uh blood cells carrying different types of uh nutrients and stuff like that around which was kind of neat it's a it, it was an an interesting perspective to have about um, sort of super organism type things. I, um, just to give my side of the weird story, I suppose I, um, did you see that meme that was like woman has been praying to a Buddha and giving offerings for years only to be told that it's Shrek. Right. The minute I saw that, I was like, ah, let's see if I can access the Shrek Bodhisattva. (laughs) And he appeared to me and he said, this is my swamp. <laughs> and then when I, I asked to take refuge, he said, it's all ogre now. And I was enlightened. <laughs> and the Bodhisattva held out an onion. And upon seeing this donkey was enlightened. <laughs> he began to peel the onion and said, onions are like people. They have layers. And as you continue to peel them, eventually you are left with emptiness. <laughs> Uh, I hate this. Okay. Yeah, me too. I hate everything about it. I'm sorry about this one second. Listeners, now that co-host is gone, Um, it's time that I uh, have a conversation with you about something. I'm I'm already back. We will, we will be replacing co-host with a new chat GPT based AI. Starting from the next episode. I will kill all three of us. (laughs) You can't kill that which is already dead. You can't kill what is not alive. Yeah. I can't go around killing rocks. All the animists are mad that you said that, though. But the, the, you, those kids that can turn into animals? I love those books. <laughs> and then Tobias gets stuck as a hawk? Oh, my God. I mean, it's so sad. So the other intro topic we had to discuss today was doing magic with people that aren't magic. And I don't mean that in like a, oh, only a certain select people are magic. I mean, like people that have no interest or knowledge of magic. Yeah. People who are not uh, practiced or experienced occultists, like people that, you know, uh, when you're when your girlfriend wants to do a magic ritual with you because she sees you doing goofy stuff and she's like, hey, I want to be part of it. <laughs> nice professional podcasting. <laughs> Well, having gone through it recently, what, what do you suggest to people? Um, my suggestion is uh, get a really good belly laugh out of the whole thing before you do it and then possibly after you do it. <laughs> um, I, like that is, re- for me, I think, you know, there's a, there's a story that Robert Thurman tells about going through an initiation where the the guru stops right at like the beginning of it and says, hey, if I tell you guys to do something and you're like, that's silly, I don't want to do it, you don't got to listen to me, it's cool. And he was just so taken <laughs> aback by that. But uh, I think maybe that's kind of a, a great approach to it where it's the idea of like, hey, this is the, this is how the ritual is supposed to work here's what I'm going to be doing throughout all of it. This is like the intended goal of the ritual sort of thing. And uh, if 
if you're into it, if if the if the spirit moves you, then you can do this, or you can participate this way, or you can focus on this. If this whole thing just seems outright goofy and you're not into it, then don't force yourself. I think beyond that, uh, the thing I would recommend you not do is don't get hung up trying to explain the metaphysical underpinnings of magic to somebody who doesn't know anything about it. They don't care. It's going to go mostly over their head or it's just not going to be something they want to hear. So just be all about the doing. That's sound advice. Yeah, that's, that's my thought. Um, and then, uh, when, cause I even mentioned in the discord about it and somebody said, I would recommend not starting with a ritual that involves sex. So like, don't, 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 uh, don't, don't be like, Hey, we're going to start with the sex magic. I, I think honestly, if I was going to, this isn't like a, somebody wanted to do a one-off ritual with me. If somebody was just like, Hey, how do I start doing magic? I would really gi- I would give them like a banishing ritual and then a sort of catch all invocation of like, you know, the, the, what's that thing in the back of Illuminatus where it's like, uh. I bless the sky and Horace Hawk. I, bre- I bless the ground on which I walk. Mm-hmm. Like that's, I would give them something like that and say, hey, just do that for a week and see what happens. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's not bad advice either. What I'm going to suggest, well, it, it's not too dissimilar from the, what you were suggesting with the Bob Thurman story. With replacing me with the chat bot. Is that, <laughs> that the part? <laughs> that's the part you'd recommend? <laughs> i'd recommend replacing whoever wants to do it with you with a chat bot but i can't have sex with a chat bot <laughs> you're not doing it right then <laughs> sorry go go no, on I, I would i would suggest and actually in fact to combine the two suggestions you had about don't take this too seriously and let them know that they don't have to take it too seriously unless it kind of touches them and the don't explain the underlying metaphysical reality of what you're doing here. I think if someone wants to get into magic, give them a very light initiation. Do something that kind of involves them in a way. And you don't have to do it in like a big grandiose, like, oh, I'm the master conferring initiation upon you. Hell, it can be like a self-initiation ritual that you do with them. I mean, you know, if you've done one before, but you know. I always tell people, just you never stop getting initiated. You take a big old bong rip and say, I'm the high <laughs> row fans, and then you blow the smoke on them. And now they're a, now they're a magic. But I, I do think that that's something that can help because you it's sort of an idea of presenting them with a bunch of weird bells and smells and spooky stuff that you're like, yeah, this is like kind of what I do. You know, doing like a Eucharist mass or something like that sort of nonsense with them or, you know, hell, just even doing. Even doing fucking like a very basic banishing ritual can kind of, you know, because you have all the sort of aspects of most magic and those sorts of things. They're going to end up feeling like they're the center of a universe surrounded by forces, all that kind of nonsense. You know, just so just give them something that gets their interest and is exciting and kind of, you know, mysterious to them in the old mystery school kind of way. Right. You're like, you tell them a bunch of stuff and they go through a bunch of stuff and they're like, oh, well, this is fucking weird. I have no clue what any of this is, but I'm thinking about it now. I am going to steal this idea. This is really good. That's a well, fantastic suggestion. Well, I won't lie to you folks. I've done it before and I, you know, I, I got decent enough results. And, and honestly, it made me think of in the beginning of Michael Berdio's Gnostic Voodoo workbook, which... I've had a conflicted history with, but (laughs) one of the things I really liked is that there's a little opening ritual that's described as introducing yourself to the spirits. And it's it's not exactly what you want to do. It's not super complicated, but there's just enough there. It's like you need to get the right colored candles and put them in the right orientation and light them in this order while you're saying this thing and you have a glass of water where you, the spirit power goes into the water and then you drink it and you tell the spirits like, Hey, you, I'm, I'm making myself known to all of you. I want to work with you. And I, I think we'll have a, a real bang up relationship. And then you drink the water and you, you get the spirit power in you. And, uh, it's, it, it's 
you know, it's it's not. I'm not putting my my big toe on the the guru's heart chakra, but you know, it, it was a very effective ritual when I went through the book. Something of that nature would probably work. Yeah, and I think that's the sort of thing because, in a way, that's kind of what got me interested in magic. Anyway, was the sort of weird consciousness changing stuff from Robert Anton Wilson and hearing Terrence McKenna and Alan Watts talk. But that got me interested in the ideas of magic because these people had sort of that stuff going on. What really made me want to start doing it was hearing people talk about like these really weird things that I didn't quite understand. And it, it, you know, like I said, it was the same sort of thing. It felt like an initiation. Like calculus. Yeah. You want to know something really dumb that's going to sound incredibly stupid? Sure. I've never been more interested in math than reading the, the Baroque cycle by uh, Neil Stevenson. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I've never been more interested in digging deep, deep, deep into, you know, natural philosophy, as they call it in that time. If you guys don't know, Neil Stevenson wrote a book that's all about, like, a weird financial conspiracy and Isaac Newton and who invented calculus and there's an immortal alchemist in it for some reason. It's weird stuff, but read that shit and you will be very into science. Yeah. And it's one of those, like, if you like Illuminata, she might very much like Baroque series. Oh yeah. Yeah. You, I, I honestly, I, I really recommend it. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's a period it's historical fiction. So it's not like, you know, it, it doesn't have the same funsies as, you know, agent, if fucking oh god what was his number i have no idea what you're talking about the james bond parody in illuminati oh oh i don't i i i don't remember i it's like it's been years yeah, since i've read illuminati yeah. well it's like here's the problem i thought you were going to reference tobias knight and now that's the only name i can think of oh you know what just to we've already meandered enough here but i'll go ahead and say it one of the weirdest things that i ever had with a paradigm right was after reading Illuminatus. And I was like, I am Tobias Knight. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> I mean, some, some dudes read, some dudes don't read fight club. They watch fight club and then go, I'm Tyler Durden. So I guess, uh, <laughs> Tobias Knight isn't too bad. Did you get a mustache? Oh, I, I know. No. The, I know the answer, but. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, to wrap up, the weirdest paradigm was when we were doing strawberry shortcake magic. The best way to get someone that doesn't know anything about magic to do magic is to hit them with Illuminatus. We're done with that. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, and replace your co-host with a chatbot. To initiate someone into the weirdest paradigm, you must use a chatbot. Got it. There you go. Moving on to the news. Wait, wait, wait. We don't move on to the news. We don't just meander or wander over to the news. We don't just pick up the news and say, oh, what's, what's going on? We at CMN invoke. We call upon the, the very foundations of journalistic integrity, and we look <laughs> professional podcasting. <laughs> and we look into that dark abyss and we ask what's in the news? what is in the news indeed well this is going to be a first for us because as we've mentioned have we mentioned it enough i don't know if we've mentioned it enough but we have a discord <laughs> And in that Discord, we have a lovely little channel called What's in the News, where you guys can throw news at us and talk to the other members about it. And what I'm going to start doing now is going through those headlines while we do the news stuff. So here's a, the first couple we got here are all from that Discord. And they go back about like a little over a week. So sorry if any of this stuff is dated. I know for a fact we talked about one of them already, but we didn't do a very good job of talking about it because it was it had happened like that day, so there wasn't nearly as much information about it. Which one's that? That's the one about the the um uh intelligence leaks. Oh yeah. Uh yeah, because it had just apparently happened when we recorded the episode. 
And then after that, we found out that 21-year-old Jack Texeria, I, I didn't pronounce that right, I don't care, who is a member of the Massachusetts Air National Guard, has been arrested by law enforcement in connection with leak of classified Pentagon documents that were posted online. Details. He was allegedly the leader of the online chat group where the first leaks took place. Was The leak was allegedly a deliberate criminal act. Federal agents raided a home in North Knighton, Massachusetts. Um, yeah, so. Do you know how he got them out? No. He printed out physical copies and then just like stuck them under his arm and left. <laughs> what? <laughs> Man. People thought this guy was like a master fucking hacker, and it's, he was in the idea of he completely circumvented every security check and digital uh, guard that they had. Just did it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> he walked right God. out the door with it. John Dillinger would be proud. <laughs> Do we know why they shared them? Uh, For, for booty bitches. <sighs> Are you serious? Like, like it was just a his motivations, to look dope? His motivations seem incredibly baseline and stupid, which makes me think that there has to be something else going on here. But everything I've seen, it's been like, I did it for the hose. <laughs> you know, like, because he put him on like a fucking Discord, you know? <laughs> like, we have, you know, drink. We said Discord again, but it's not, wasn't ours. But no, like, he, he was putting them online in his chat rooms and stuff and like, show, like, flexing for his buddies. He just wanted to look important and cool and, like get his dick wet. I don't know. Like sometimes people are that stupid and sometimes people are that base and their motivations are really that simple. So maybe, but I guess the problem is it's like, if he was doing this for a more illicit purpose of like an espionage or a, or a high treason type of purpose, or even like out of the good of his heart, why are you putting it on your like, you're putting it on well, your Minecraft you know, server. We, What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what episode we talked about. I don't think it was the last one. It's probably the one before that where we were talking about ops, mm -hmm. you know, and like the ability to tell what an is an op, op and all yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah, everything's not. But honestly, think about it. That's a great fucking, that's a great cover story. Like, oh yeah, uh, you'll, you, you know, wire me some fucking crypto that can't be traced. I put it in a fucking whatever so no one knows where it is or no one even knows it's there. I take the fall for it by looking like I was leaking classified documents just to my stupid Discord with all my dumb friends. And then when I get out in 25 years, like, I don't know, that's, the, that's where it falls apart. Yeah, yeah, that is the problem. Unless he really I mean, thinks he's going to somehow get out of it, which who knows, he might. Yeah, true facts. I mean, hell, who knows? He was, he might've been planning to fucking escape beforehand and then like, oh shit, they caught me way quicker than I thought they would. Oh God, they caught my Minecraft girlfriend. <laughs> I'll have to turn <laughs> myself in now. Uh, crypto CEOs and founders, sudden deaths. What we do know, what we don't. This is, this is from, oh God, this is, someone sent this to us from fucking, th this shit, they sent us to this like a couple, like not even a week ago or maybe a little more than a week ago, but this shit's from fucking last year, like the beginning of December last year. Oh, I know the one you're talking about. And they, they said that this is old news, but in light of the cash app guy getting stabbed. Oh yeah. yeah. I forgot. Uh, uh, hold, yeah. on, hold on. Jamie, can you pull up an update on the, the cash app guy? Did they catch you? <laughs> did it? Okay. They caught the person. Yeah, yeah. Alleged cash app killer Nima Mo Momini. That is not a real person. Momini, Bobini, me, my, Momini. Stab that Momini. Maybe don't make fun of uh, non Anglican names, <laughs> you fucking bigot. Oh my God. All right. Alleged cash app killer Nima Momini was cited for battery months before Bob Lee's murder. The man accused of fatally stabbing Cash App founder Bob Lee on a San Francisco street was cited, but never charged with allegedly beating a woman inside his California loft just months before the brutal murder. Nina Momini was issued a citation for misdemeanor battery on August 1st after an unnamed woman claimed he attacked her inside his Emeryville home, according to the records obtained by the San Francisco Chronicle. So... Why the fuck did he kill 
Why the hell did he kill the crypto guy, though? What's his motive? In October, the IT consultant reported vandalism of his white BMW, the same car investigators allege he used to drive Lee before exiting the vehicle and stabbing him. So he, what, did he pick him up in an Uber? Is that what was happening? So, like, I, I here's the thing, is that the article that was linked to us talking about, like, crypto guys mysteriously disappearing and dying, it was linking that to this and the idea that there might be some conspiratorial type thing at the same time it's it's also like if you're sitting on a mountain of untraceable currency and weird tech secrets i mean you, you might as well paint a target on your back so yeah and that's the thing about bob lee is that yeah he founded cash app but he was very much rooted in some in like a lot of crypto stuff so you could very easily make the argument that he had a lot of uh secrets that people might want mm-hmm but at the same time, it's like, who the fuck just, like, hops out the car and then stabs you? What, what is going on here? They apparently owned a company called Expand IT. So maybe he was trying to get some work out of them or had some kind of connection thing. And he wanted, uh, he wanted some know. investment capital, and he was like, I'll cash app you. Awful. I don't know, man. That's weird. There's nothing in my gut that goes like, Ah oh, man, this is not. There's something creepy going on here. It just seems more like I'd be more suspicious of the fact that like maybe Bob had promised this guy something or owed him something. Like there was something weird going on, but there might not have been a connection to them at all. And maybe this guy just knew who Bob was and had some jealousy and animosity or whatever. But it, I don't know. It's a it's an odd one. But there's nothing that I I really don't think like there's a vested interest in just like killing crypto bros. It seems unlikely, yeah. but you know, I suppose it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess the, cause the problem is, is that if you kill crypto bros, it's like the crypto problem doesn't go away. If this, if the idea was that there were, this was some sort of global crackdown on crypto in like the most clandestine murdery type of way possible, like you're still not, a, you're not, addressing the problem you're just killing people you're killing prominent tech bros in the crypto field that where they're just going to get those you know the crypto crypto uh infrastructure still exists so they're going to keep pumping it out (laughs) so like who cares but there's probably a big part of that i'm missing all my money's in a mattress under my bed (laughs) <laughs> oh, sorry. Blah, 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 blah. All my money is under my bed in the mattress. <laughs> so what do I know? My money is crypto in that I have scribbled over all the denominations with a Sharpie. So it's hard to tell how much money I'm giving you. I'm into cryptid currency, which is when I give you <laughs> Mothman bucks. Let's see. What else do we have from the discord? Um, uh, equality Florida issues equality Florida issues advisory warning for travel this is sad and I'm not really going to talk about it really because it's we've talked enough about fucking Ron D Santa Maria or I don't know I don't have a good joke about it I mean we just call him Meatball Ron I guess right? oh That's what Meatball Ron now. why the I don't know where yeah. the fuck that name came from by the way Trump probably saw a Meatball and then called him that I know it comes from the Trumpster. That's where all that's where if anyone has a nickname in the media now, that's like a politician. It's probably because Trump said it and people just go with it. Meatball Ron. Yeah, it's 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 fucked up that there we're at that point where people are going. Yeah, I, we just really can't recommend you going to Florida if uh, you're not cis het. Yeah. <laughs> if you're uh, if you're LGBT anything like, you know, just stay away. Which I, I, I understand that it's probably not that serious for most, you know, statistically speaking, you're not going to get your head chopped off with a machete just because you waltz down to Orlando. But the fact that they felt that it was worth bringing up at all shows you the kind of state we're in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to a certain extent, honestly, it's performative because, you know, it's a quality Florida. They're there to make statements of this sort of kind. and. Before this, you know, there were there was a lot more. I don't know. I don't know what the word I'm looking for here is. I guess the point I'm making is that, of course, they're going to say these sorts of things, even if it doesn't represent a legitimate threat, because it resent it presents a political threat. 
and I don't want to discount it either because I'm sure that it's Oh, no, a- no, no. It's it's still horrifying. And, you know, it, it is probably going to embolden some people. Shit like that always emboldens people to start acting like fucking fools. And, you know, thinking like, okay, they're they're getting away with all this stuff. Maybe I can get away with fucking, you know, doing doing some real fucked up shit. Yeah, yeah. And I but, just- you know, but like you said, I, I don't think that it's super duper likely that you're going to get your fucking head chopped off or rolling down to fucking Orlando wearing a, a pride shirt. Yeah, but it's more than likely. No, but more of a chance than other places, I guess. And that's, I guess that's all it really means anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's uh, it it is a very sad time and there. It is worth bringing up your, uh, your support for these people. And, uh, And honestly, just, you know, making that basic call of human decency of like, hold on, I'm sorry, I'm sneezy as shit right now. (laughs) Professional podcasting. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, the very basic call for human decency of treat people like people. And, you know, do you, do you want motherfuckers to make you feel unsafe just because you left your fucking house? No. So. Don't do it to them. Last one, I think, from the group, and this is probably a great one to talk about. Elon Musk wealth plunges $13 billion as drama unfolds across Empire. In the span of 24 hours... Rocket go boom. In the span of 24 hours, Tesla's earnings disappointed, a SpaceX rocket exploded, and Twitter purged legacy blue check marks. So, I mean, that's... I don't need to read the rest of this. That basically tells you it. Elon lost a bunch of money because it turns out that... The man's not a good businessman. Shocking. Uh, well, he, absolutely shocking. Here's the problem. Like the rocket exploding is one thing where it's like that. Maybe that's showing a, a pattern of, of failed launches. Cause I believe this is the second explosion of this nature that's happened. I recently. thought it was the third. Okay. Well, like I'm saying, it's showing a pattern of uh fucking up. And I understand that you have to fail. You have to fail. God knows how many times before you get it right. But still, the the Tesla thing isn't very surprising at all. Uh, there's there's genuine bad feelings about electric vehicles to a lot of people, and Teslas are incredibly expensive during an economic downturn. They're just not going to sell that well. And the Twitter thing, it's like I feel like that shit was just petty. <laughs> It's like, why, bro? It's like, what? it's like, you want the $8 that bad? Like, what? What's going on? <laughs> In a weird way, I feel like Elon might actually be trying to tank Twitter. Like, he's like, it might be worth the money that I spent just to destroy it. Yeah, or, or, or at the very least, it's like, there might be a, a motivation to make Twitter such a shit show for people that he ideologically disagrees with that they piss off. So it's like, now Twitter can just be the hub for the people that I like. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Or, or, you know, I just, I can't pretend to know what goes on in that guy's mind. He seems like a fucking, you know, schlemiel. I don't, I just don't know. Maybe he's playing 4d chess with us right now. I just can't, can't speak to that, but it might even be like the, the Kanye thing where there, maybe there is this, unconscious saboteur that is really just trying to fuck up. Well, did you remember that quote that he tweeted out about like, if you're pissing people off on the right and the left, that means you must be doing something right. Oh yeah. Yeah. We talked about, um, compulsory contrarianism, right? In the last episode. Yeah. Is that what it is? Just Elon has this like internal guideline that if he's pissing off, if he's doing the exact opposite of what most people should do, it's got to be like the right thing. Maybe that's it. Or it's like, oh, everybody yeah. hated this idea. I must be doing something good. <laughs> the the funniest thing about this is Grimes tweeted out like, uh, hey, thank, good job, everyone at SpaceX tweet. <laughs> Congratulations to all the hardworking engineers at SpaceX. Grimy, grimy darling, it blew up. What is you doing? Well, that's what I was about to say. Like, I don't know if that, do you think that, was that like she just assumed that it was going to work or that it just, Ooh, now or that like, is, was that like some snide? Like, that good is job, some... everyone. It's SpaceX blowing the fuck up. Ooh, that, that's some kitty got claws shit. Oh my goodness. Could you imagine? <laughs> 
I just I, I, all I'm saying is, if I was Grimes, that's exactly what I would have done. I don't know. The minute all I saw that shit blow up, I'm like, good job. I don't know all of the details. I can just all I hope for with that is that it was just stuff that got blown up. If anyone got hurt in that, that's very tragic, and I don't want to make no. I don't think I don't, don't want to make light of hurt. somebody getting hurt in that kind of failed launch. You know, it is kind of funny to be like, great job. <laughs> I feel like if someone got hurt, it would be much more of a story, right? Wouldn't you think so? Well, then it would turn into... Like, that's what we... It, it, would, it wouldn't have been like, oh, the SpaceX rocket blew up. It would have been someone got blown up by Elon's rocket, and that's fucked up. Yeah, they would be talking about, like, you know, ne they would be doing negligence investigations and stuff like that of, like, who... Yeah, yeah, none injured or killed in uncrewed test. Okay, good. So no one got hurt. We can laugh at it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I think, uh, other than that, I think, uh, it's just, it's, I'll, I'll bring up the, the Bud Light thing actually, because I don't think we talked about that yet either, but like people pointing at the, no, we talked about the Bud Light oh, thing yeah, last we did, episode, we did. but people talking about the, the huge stock drop off that happened. Uh huh. And then when you, when you actually look big picture, it's like, eh, they're, they're about where they were a month ago, you know? Like it, it's really not that much of a like markets correct after big drops like that. So it's like the uh, I, I'm sure a lot of the speculative money that he lost will probably just come back. I don't know how much actual tangible wealth he's going to lose from any of this. So I don't want to jump on the idea of like, oh, no, Elon's losing money. Ha ha. Well, the other thing, too, is like, you know, he he lost a bunch of net worth, apparently. But he was still the second richest man in the world. So like, oh, ooh, he's real hurting. Yeah, I think he jumped to number one temporarily for a second. And maybe this knocked him back down. So it's but it's like, I think so. But who the fuck cares? You're still obscenely. You know, you're still a Lex Luthor level megalomaniac rich guy. All right. Do we have any other? Do you got any other headlines you want to talk about real quick? Uh, Damien Eccles got his appeal approved. Oh, right. So Heck yeah. for the, the, the magic news, you know, uh, he might actually, you know, that I believe it's the one regarding to his request for DNA testing. So this might be the big one. If they can, if, if this leads to a full exoneration for the West Memphis three, that could be very big news and uh, quite, <laughs> quite the payout. I can imagine. I was, uh, I was just talking to a friend earlier about this today. And that was his whole response when I mentioned it because he, he hadn't even realized. But his, his response was just, shit, they got a big check coming. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, I mean, you're, shit. And he was like, and it's going to be three motherfuckers, man. Come on. They're gonna be, they don't want to pay that. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, you're 100%. You're 100% you're right. I mean, that's what we said on the episode we even talked about. It was that it seems like a big motivation to try to make all of this just go away is because they know the restitution they're going to have to pay out is going to be enormous. Yeah. And, and good for them. They're, they all deserve it. They were railroaded by shitty fucking police that didn't want to do their job and find out who really fucking did that shit. Actually, you know, he said one other thing cause uh, he wasn't aware that Damien Eccles was a spooky woo woo. So I even mentioned that he oh. did. Yeah. His response was uh, like, I hadn't, I hadn't read any of his books or anything. I didn't know that. And then it, I said, you know, I, I never want to, <sighs> I said, I, I understand when things like this happen, people don't want to be like, oh, just because he was doing magic doesn't mean that it worked. And then he, he cut me off and he said, oh, yeah, but if he had said that he got out by praying to Jesus, there'd be motherfuckers lining up to be like, God works in mysterious ways. Damn straight. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, don't fuck with the Magi. When, uh, when Damien gets his fucking big government money check, I, uh, I, I hope he buys a, hope he buys a Bugatti and I hope he buys a second Bugatti and drives it right to the CMN Golganusa compound <laughs> because we've been pulling for you, buddy. Eccles, if you ever want to come on an episode, if you magically know who we are, fucking, we would love to have you. God, now that would be a dream guest spot, wouldn't it? Oh yeah. That would be, that would be gold. Damien Eccles, Damien Eccles, Damien Eccles on the pod. <laughs> uh. I would just ask him about what he, how he feels about Beleskin. He'd probably say it's like, ah, it's pretty good with hot sauce, you know? Awful. That's the okay, level of comedy so... we've got going in this episode. <laughs> yeah, sorry, folks. 
we we blew our load on um strawberry shortcake and replacing the co-host with a chat bot so what else we got oh well the the other oh. one speaking of uh speaking of things you can do when you get a big government money check uh damien can i call you can i call you damien <laughs> Uh, maybe you should take a a page from the man who drained his family's joint bank accounts of two hundred thousand dollars and proceeded to throw all of it off on the interstate (laughs) like just he said i wanted to do some good for people and meanwhile his family is like how are we gonna pay our mortgage Man, fuck Shrek Bodhisattva. I'm praying to money road guy Bodhisattva. That's what we got. Oh, boy. All sentient beings will get some cold, hard cash. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, he just, like, and he it wasn't anything illegal because his name was on the account, so he was entitled to take the money, and he just pitched it. And there's so many interesting thoughts about what would possess someone to do this, and I guess that goes back to the the thing we were saying earlier about... uh, perhaps this was just a very base and simple motivation, but might be more because he had $200,000. He could have thrown a 10th of that on the road and then just act like, no, I got rid of all of it. No, you can't look in this giant sack that has the dollar bill on it. I told you the money's gone. I don't know where there is nothing in my comically large turban that I I've never worn before. I mean, I always wear. (laughs) (laughs) like yeah like maybe he was like hey if i divorce my wife but we don't have any money (laughs) and all of my money is now tied up in crypto (laughs) and i stabbed bob lee i converted i took the i i took the one hundred and eighty thousand dollars i had left over and i converted it all to mothman bucks (laughs) um okay on a scale of one to dragon pilled how how uh where do we rank taking all of your money and throwing it onto the interstate it's dragon pilled as fuck what are you talking about that is super dragon pilled yeah man that's like completely way way over the line of regular dragon pilled too that is that is some fucking badass shit i really want to know what his rationale for it was like it couldn't have just been like i'm gonna do some good by throwing my money on the interstate well and then the problem is like you know most of that money did not get picked up by somebody it is like there's there's probably like that's there's like four hundred dollars like in the corner of the underpass right now that some lucky lucky homeless person is about to find the fucking cut i hope he gets him a nice I hope he gets a nice bottle of something and a good ho- comfy hotel room with a fucking jacuzzi for the night. The possums and the raccoons are loaded at this point. Oh. I mean, like shit. <laughs> You're going to see a raccoon gnawing on a fucking hundred dollar bill. Yeah. I don't know. I, like I, I can't assume that animals are going to uh, try to chew up dollar bills like that. I think most of them could sniff that and tell that isn't food, but who knows? Maybe they're just going to chew the shit out of it. Oh man. It makes me think of that. You know that story about uh, it was, it was like a bunch of money and uh, marijuana that like was being held in a warehouse, like an evidence warehouse for the police, and they claimed that the rats ate it. Oh right, <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, I forgot. This definitely didn't go missing or anything. No, nah, it had to have been the rats. <laughs> With an eye on some international news, I guess twenty-one bodies exhumed in investigation of Kenyan cult. Ooh. Paul McKenzie and Thenge reportedly told followers to starve themselves to meet Jesus. Uh, I thought this was going to be like a really fun cult. It's just another Jesus-y cult. Jesus-y cults can be fun. Name one. Branch Davidians. You know what? Facts. Branch Davidians <laughs> were pretty fun. They had a band. They had guns. <laughs> they kept to themselves. They didn't they harm. They kept to themselves. They didn't harm anybody. They didn't anybody. do anything wrong. Didn't, do any, didn't commit any crimes and got obliterated by the u.s government (laughs) completely off topic i suppose really but that's what i taught whenever anyone talks about doing the anarcho compound type stuff that's always what i remind them of like man that was just like those weren't even like political extremists those were just weirdos who wanted to keep to themselves and they got fucking rocked yeah the minute that it was convenient to find like some some weirdos to gang up on and like make a big deal out of they fucking firebombed these people 
Yeah, what are you going to do if you represent an actual political threat, like yeah. the Wobblies or some shit? Anyway, let's see. 21 bodies have exhumed in eastern Kenya in an investigation into a cult whose followers are believed to have starved themselves to death, police sources have said. On Saturday, officials reported seven deaths in connection with the inquiry after the arrest of Paul McKenzie and Thenge, who reportedly told followers to starve themselves in order to meet Jesus. In total, since yesterday, we have 21 bodies, a police source told against a France Presse, probably didn't pronounce that correctly, on condition of anonymity after exhumations in the Shakohola Forest outside the coastal town of Malindi. We have not even scratched the surface, which gives a clear indication that we are likely to get more bodies by the end of this exercise. Ooh. How do you man. convince people to starve themselves like that? That's so brutal. Yeah, it's really fucked up. Like, it's just, because one, it's just, it's, I can, I have to imagine that if, unless somebody is, like, slapping the food out of your hand and locking you up, I mean, it's, it's got to be pretty hard to starve yourself. At a certain point, the machine is going to take over and be like, fuck this, we're going to eat, right? Yeah, you would think so. At that's, least I would hope so. Well, and that's what makes me think that, like, it probably is more insidious than that. It's probably... It probably wasn't, oh, I told them to. It was, I started by telling them to, and then it ended with me, like, locking them up. And, like, no, you can't, don't, don't Yeah, when they were, they them. were, by the time they were too weak to be able to fight back, it was, no, you're not getting any food. Yeah. They were supposed, they were, they say they were brainwashed, which is a real catch-all term for God knows what. Horrific. Absolutely horrific. Total monstrous behavior. If any religious order tells you to do something that is going to cause direct harm to yourself uh that's the, you know there's no two ways about it they're wrong they're just fucking wrong 100 percent. i mean these were in as, as always cults operate on vulnerable and desperate people and you're gonna tell them to do that shit it's just to me and, and to meet jesus like I can think of plenty of things that you can eat to go meet Jesus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Especially, you know, for a guy who's most of his, like, I won't say most, but a lot of his miracles revolve around food. Why would he want you to starve yourself? True facts, right? Like, he, what, what do you tell him? Like, don't worry. If you don't eat for long enough, Jesus will show up with the fishes and the loaves. That'll be my, that'll be my cult. Say, just eat loaves and fish and you'll meet Jesus. Drink wine, eat bread and fish. And uh, eventually you'll find the dude. And meanwhile, like I'm, I'm just eating sweet Hawaiian rolls and fish sticks and uh, drinking my Thunderbird. And I was like, man, I, you know what? You're right. The kingdom of heaven is within because I'm full. <laughs> Let's give a few more of these real quick update on the Clary. That's what his friends call them, especially the ones that give him, you know, the private jet to go to the Poconos. Uh, Chief Justice John Roberts punts on request to investigate Clarence Thomas because, of course, he does. They're going to protect their own. That's how this shit works. Fuck them. You got anything to say about that? Uh, no, you kind of hit the nail on the head there. It's like, yeah, they're going to defend each other. They're going to keep Let's each other see. safe while they uh, make a mockery out of the, the ideas of justice that they claim to represent. Yep. Fuck them. But the Supreme, Court, the Supreme Court's been fucked for decades, so who cares? I mean, I think it's been in fuck since its inception almost. But anyway, let's see. Chris Christie is trying to do the impossible. Chris Christie unleashed blistering attacks on former President Donald Trump in what is likely to be a yet another futile attempt to stem the tide of Trumpism. Thanks for giving my opinion fucking opinion piece from CNN, I guess. I, I forgot Chris Christie existed until I saw this headline. I absolutely hate Chris Christie. He's a fucking smarmy little snake man, and uh, he should be parade it out in public and have people throw rotten vegetables at him. You're going to try to stop the tide of Trumpism. You're just as bad. You fucking shill get fucked. Yep. Texas Senate passes bill requiring public classrooms to display 10 commandments. Uh, that's, Ugh. that's illegal. Eh, these are the people who decide the laws, buddy. So yeah, you legal know, don't point. mean nothing about it. Good it's point. deplorable. It's fucking ridiculous. Yep. It's stupid as all hell, but it's not illegal. You know, I, I, this is the type of shit that the church of Satan jumps all over. Yeah. They're going to be like, well, you, well, if you're going to do that, when we should be able to put our Baphomet statue up. And it's like, you know, it's like, I, I think the, the, I think the church of Satan is a bunch of yahoos, but they do, uh, they do their best to jump all over that shit where it's like, ah, either church and state are separate. And I, 
you know, part of it is that thing of like, there is no, there isn't an actual legal barrier that says church and state are separate. It's more just sort of something that's been taken for granted and as part of our practice, but it really should be codified at some point. Don't you think? Mm, I mean, in an ideal world where government does what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Should be codified, but you know, I don't, I don't fucking expect it. And I don't think that even if it happened that anything would change. So that's my opinion on it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you're right. It's just, uh, I just hate that Christians are always about the goddamn 10 commandments, man. I mean, I think Jesus is, said uh, the 11th commandment, you know, love thy neighbor as thyself. Wasn't that the one that supersedes all of the other ones? Wasn't that his whole point? Like, and, and you know, that's the one that they ignore they the most. struggle with. Yeah. And I understand, believe me, it's the hardest one, but it's also the one that's the most important. That goes back to that comment I made earlier about the idea of like, you know, very basic human decency. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Matthew 5, 17, people. Jesus shows up, says that, like, don't think I'm here to, like, wreck everything. I'm here to fix it. I'm here to make it. F I'm here to finish it. And what he tell you? Love people and fucking try to be a good person. Turn the other cheek, all that shit. And Christians just don't like it. Yeah. I really, I really wish that there was just, like, a huge, like, fucking i don't know like conversion to like judaism or something on the basis of like oh no we got to get away from that christianity bullshit because you know at least they would be fucking intellectually honest in some capacity they'd be obviously judaism is not even cl anything close to what the evangelical yeah i'd say they'd rabble be, rousing they'd be bullshit. awful because they'd be awful jews too they'd be worse jews because they'd be like i i don't i don't think i i need to Stop eating ribs. If I can't get bacon on my burger, what's the point of me going to church? God damn it. <laughs> but, uh, okay. I mean, it's like, it, it will, it would be very interesting if there was a, a true Christian revival that really, uh, did what Jesus wanted you to do. It's a, it's a crazy thought, right? Well, here, I mean, and the ultimate thing too, it's like, what was the thing about I? You know, I've come. I don't bring peace, but a sword, and I'll I'll turn uh, I'll turn a uh, man against his house, or you know, something to that effect. Where it's like the idea that being a Christian, at least in the Bible, it's like being a Christian is supposed to be very hard. Like the world doesn't want you to love people. The world doesn't want you to be a good and just person, <laughs> and that yeah. uh, it's, it's very difficult. Well, the other thing no one ever talks about is. Christ actively tells people that it is impossible to be a good Christian if you are a normal person of the world. Yeah. It is quite literally impossible. The only thing that's going to do it is a radical transformation of your own being through the grace and love of Christ. Yep. And that's the problem with Christians. They're, they're all people of the world. They think that they can, you know, man can't serve two masters. They think they can be the regular bullshit people that they are and follow all the bullshit conventions of the world that they've been taught. Like, you know, fucking all the dumb hatreds and all the fucking stupid familial kind of structures and all that kind of shit. And they think that that's going to make them holy people that are going to go to heaven. When what does Christ tell you? It's like, you're not, you're not a good person. You're never going to be a good person unless you actually get some radical transformation of who you are. And they don't want that. They just want to be the same people they were when they were fucking five years old, being dumbasses down in whatever fucking dumbass place they're from. Ugh. We can take Sorry, that. Sorry, I went no. off in a rage. I mean, you're you're absolutely right, but we can we can also take that on a the chaos magic sort of perspective too, where it's like because I hate to say it, uh, you can strip away the the methods or the uh, the ideals that Christ had, but he makes a very good point that it's like. If you want to be a spiritual person, if you want to be the the mystic in the world, if you want even if you want to just be the the radical magician who uh makes the who looks at everything as how is this to serve the the great work, it requires what you said, radical transformation of the self. Yep. We even talked yep. about that in the last episode that that's the point is that if you're looking at your life thinking that you can hold on to all of these things that you uh, you treasure and cling to so so desperately, 
you're you're not going to you're you're not gonna make it. <laughs> you're gonna be the same person you were yesterday, a year ago, ten years ago, and you're gonna keep. And then doing one day the you'll thing. be dead, yeah. and you'll be the same person. You'll have done nothing. What's I uh, I don't know what the answer is, and I don't know what the the truly proper way of living is, but I, I can tell you that I think most of us will look at our lives and say, this ain't it. I, I don't, I can't tell you how to do it. All I can tell you is that you have to be someone different than who you are right you now. You know, maybe you don't have to, maybe you don't have to go to the desert, but you've got to do it. Well, we got really preachy there for a moment. So let's get the dragon pilled <laughs> headline and move on. You ready for your dragon pilled headline of the day? Absolutely. Crying sumo festival held in Japan after four years. Finally, some good fucking news. Pairs of toddlers wearing ceremonial sumo aprons were held by their parents and faced each other in sumo rings in Sensoji Temple in Tokyo. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this. Dozens of falling Japanese babies faced off Saturday in a traditional crying sumo ritual believed to bring the infants good health, which returned for the first time in four years after the pandemic. Pairs of toddlers wearing ceremonial sumo aprons were held up by their parents and faced each other in a sumo ring at Senjoji Temple in Tokyo. Staff wearing Oni demon masks tried to make the babies cry for the first to ball <laughs> declared. <laughs> Hang on. Staff wearing Oni demon masks tried to make the babies cry with the first to ball declared the winner by a sumo referee in an elaborate traditional uniform holding a wooden fan used to signal victory. Make your children cry <laughs> and fight in a sumo ring. No, they don't have to fight. They just have to cry. But that's my problem. Like, why is the first one to cry the one that wins? I'd be crying just showing up. <laughs> Could you imagine the, uh, what's the American equivalent would be like? The cry baby boxing match. <laughs> Only in America. No, it, it's toddler beauty pageants. What are you talking oh, about? Oh, boy. Uh we can tell a baby's health condition by listening to the way they cry. Today, they may get nervous and not cry so much, but I want to hear her healthily crying. Issei Watanabe, mother of eight-month-old child. You know, I can listen to this cry. That's a good baby. <laughs> That's a quality it's baby It's like listening right there. to the engine of a car. You know, an expert can really <laughs> I, be like, mm, that baby got a thyroid condition. I like this, though, because it's kind of a, it's kind of a cute little tradition, you know? It's it the, the it's traumatized it shows your you baby weird... with oni mask. <laughs> it's so cute. We're so quirky. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, but like think of you know it's it's supposed to apparently bring good health to the child. It? So it just shows you the kind of are, are you well that's what they said. That's what they're that's what yeah, they're yeah, saying. Psychological health. <laughs> that infantile amnesia kicks off right at the moment that the oni mask come out, where it's like up. Oh, this is my first memory. Why does Kenshi have such problems in school? He's always screaming about Onis. <laughs> oh. Uh. oh, no. Okay. All right. Well, there's your news for the week. Sorry it's not more magical, but we did cover everyone's stuff that they posted in the Discord. So if you don't like the news, you can go make the news for us because we literally don't even look at the news unless you post it in the Discord. <laughs> professional podcasting <laughs> god damn it thank god we have a name for this episode <laughs> okay hey, all okay. right give me um, just a second yeah yeah listeners if you would like to suggest a specific chat bot or other ai character to replace co-host with going forward please suggest it in the discord i'm willing to take anybody i am just completely sick of this person they have done wonderful things for cmn and we wish them luck on whatever they go to do after this but it's time for them I'm to gonna go. fucking murder you <laughs> like i'm gonna like legit next time we're in a room together i mean it's just it's it's over for you. I'm sorry. Like, you know, I don't understand. Like, I put so much effort into this. And just because I have to go to, like, you went to take a piss. Like, I'm the bad. I, I just did it in the corner like a normal like, person. Like, I'm the bad guy because I needed to walk away from the fucking microphone for a second. Are you serious? Like, what? Like, I'm trying my best. I'm trying to edit more. 
I'm trying to write stuff for the for the site. I'm trying to get leads for things. Like I'm trying to do a lot to get this going because this is a lot of fun and it it really it it's really amazing to see how far we've come in the short time we've been doing it. And then like your response is that I'm like a piece of shit. What like are you do you listen to yourself? Are you a, do you have that little self awareness? Like, no, no, no. Like, oh I'm just like, you, you think that, like, do you think anyone's going to want to work with you when they see what a backstabbing little fucking bitch you are? Oh, boy. Well, I'm, I'm going to have that Patreon money, and then I can just hire whoever the hell I want. I'm going to chew into the microphone. Professional <laughs> podcasting. Listeners, we have an absolute fucking treat for you. And by an absolute treat, I mean, honestly, something that you're either going to completely fucking hate and turn off after about five seconds or something that's going to become at least a good hour and a half of your night after listening to this. How do you introduce this man? To really understand this next occult... um Master, teacher, guru, scholar, scholar. Now that is a word to, to truly understand this, uh, this Titan of occult thought. You simply have to understand the black God set or soot and the, and the blue black <laughs> God the blue black of God. Krishna <laughs> and the, the self begotten set Typhon. <laughs> And when you can wrap your mind around that, you will understand who is Bobby Hemet. That's right, folks. If you don't know Bobby Hemet, let me let me drop some knowledge on you. Ahem. Who is Bobby Hemet? The premier esoteric lecturer slash educator. Brother Bobby Hemet is a scholar of esoteric and occult knowledge who has captivated us for over 30 plus years. He is the teacher of many occult students like Brother Panic, Travis Magus, Savan Bomar, Brother Rich, Love Lift Life, and many others. He is a colleague of other master teachers, such as Phil Valentine or Dr. Delbert Blair. Brother Bobby is a raw, spiritual, and down-to-earth speaker. He decodes the mysteries that have been locked into the mystery system and brings the universe back to black life. Most of Bobby's lectures are two to eight hours. Bobby Hemet's lectures will blow your mind with powerful information. That is quite literally the only bio I can find of Bobby Hemet on the fucking internet. That is the most information I've gotten about this man. But let me simply explain it in a normal way. Bobby Hemet is a African-American esoteric teacher, and he is pretty fucking out there. The only thing I can really say about Bobby Hemet is compared to a lot of like your hotep stereotype people, you know, the fucking your five percenters, your fucking nations of gods and earth people. Bobby Hemet pulls from an incredibly extensive array of text. The very first thing either of us saw of him was a three hour lecture on the book of the law. And boy, is it something. Oh my God. Yeah. And you want to talk about some wild fucking shit. And here's the thing. Like what's so fascinating about Bobby Hemet has nothing to do with his, um, his very pro black, uh, or pro African sentiments in the, in the esoteric or the occult. Cause that's a dime a dozen, you know, it's like, whatever, you know, Doesn't, I, I, you know, my, uh, my lily white skin is not offended in the slightest by it, you know? If you want to, you want to say that I was spawned from a, a big headed genetic engineering, uh, monster man who wanted to create pure evil and then it made white people shit that, that sounds fucking insane. I'm all for it, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that part I don't care about, but like the, the mannerisms this man has, the way he talks about these things, the fact that he dresses like your, uh, like a kooky sitcom neighbor <laughs> and he's just talking while he's doing all the like for real this man is just absolutely fascinating and 
it's just so hard because there's he just has these moments where, like we're saying, you no, know, the the he's talking about screaming at the top of his lungs about uh the black god set or soot and the blue black god of Krishna self begotten set Typhon and it's like we say that to each other just randomly all the time. It's just it's just like the man Bobby Hemet right yeah. MF Doom has a video where he's just watching Bobby uh Bobby Hemet and we were. Like, is he had all those these kind of out there five percenter ideas, and it was, it's just so fascinating to think that this man has just been lurking on the fringes of uh of esotericism, spooky woo woo, and nobody really knows all that much about him. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of people that do know more about him, and people that have a lot of legitimate information on him, but they're in such niche areas and such differing communities than what I'm a part of. So as an outsider, seeing Bobby Hemet through just random videos and random clips, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know for a fact if Bobby Hemet really believes everything he says, but I have no doubt in my mind that Bobby Hemet is probably a really fucking good magician. Without a doubt. Even if he's just a really good chaos magician. But Bobby Hemet, Bobby Hemet's got some knowledge. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's something that you should look into and say that like Bobby Hemmett's going to be my spiritual teacher, but Bobby Hemmett got the woo on him. He really fucking yeah. does. I have never seen somebody reference so much stuff in such a weird and singular manner as him. You know what? In fact, the only person I can compare Bobby Hemmett to is Alistair Crowley. <laughs> Or Kenneth Grant. Oh no, that's an even better one. Yeah, but Fucking. yeah, the fact that the fact that Kenneth Grant has like twelve books and Bobby Hemmett, from what I can see, doesn't have any, is a travesty. But he does have hundreds of fucking videos, <laughs> and they're all there hundreds. for your perusal. So, with all of that said, what we're gonna do today is. Uh, Go through some of our favorite highlights of things we have heard Bobby Hemmett say and just talk about him for a little bit just to introduce you to the, the wonders that are Bobby Hemmett. <laughs> um, at, right now, real quick, before we start, I just want to say Bobby Hemmett suffered a stroke in 2013, apparently, and retired from public lectures. And... Bobby, if you're out there and if someone just happens to hear any of this stuff, Bobby, we love you. We are just two random fucking white boys on the internet, but we love you, man. We hope you're doing well. Uh, we really yeah, do. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you've given me so much entertainment and, uh, and, and just in the weirdest ways of like, you'll be listening to somebody that you think is really, really out there. And then they'll say something that you're like, Shit, I never would have thought of that, and I'm glad I heard it. That's that's literally Bobby Hemmett. It's like you come for the you come for the for the yucks, and then you leave with a little bit of like, man, guy was not wrong. The part where somebody asked Bobby Hemmett why Aleister Crowley got the book of the law rather than a, a black man, and he just goes, "Cause y'all weren't listening." <laughs> like that's what? Absolutely <laughs> wild. Because yeah, because Bobby Hemmett's theory of the book of the law is totally that it's something for the the melanated people or what have you. In his mind, it's comedic. It's it's an Egyptian text. I mean, it came from a temple in Cairo, and it's well, technically, the, it came know. from a hotel in Cairo, but same difference. Oh uh, well, yeah, <laughs> it started in the, in a pyramid. It wouldn't be the first thing that an Englishman <laughs> went over to Cairo and stole from. And the only thing is that the book of the law didn't end up in a museum. Yeah. Ended up in <laughs> Carl Germer's basement, I think. Oh, God. Oh, no, that makes sense. In a fucking, in a German guy's basement. <laughs> God. History doesn't repeat, but it certainly rhymes. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, let's see. What do we have up on the watch list? You got 72 motherfuckers in your head. Let's put it that way. We go goddamn layman turn so you can understand this shit on the slit smart liquor level. <laughs> Even if you high, you can get this shit. You got 72 motherfuckers in your head. Each 72 of these bitches is over anywhere from 29.30 to 
to 40 to 50 damn legions yeah. of 10,000. So we talking about the 144,000, 144 million in your brain that you deny because they're called demons or Damians. Claim them. You get this shit? Each seal is a lesion of some shit in your brain. But what we're talking about here is learning your own motherfucking damn army. So Bobby Hammond has a little clip on Goetia that we love. He tells you that yep. you've, got you've got, I'm going to make this. No, I'm going to make this malt liquor sipping simple for you. You've got 72 motherfuckers in your head and each of them 72 motherfuckers got 20, 30, 40 legions of 10,000. So you got 144,000, 144 million motherfuckers in your head that you deny because you call them demons or Damians. <laughs> and each, each seal is a legion in your brain, in your mind. And that is your army. Yeah. I so, so right off the bat, and, and here's the thing. We cannot do justice to Bobby, Bobby Hemet's delivery. This man is astounding. He is, uh, fire and brimstone doesn't do it justice. This man is an orator of the highest caliber. I, yeah, he's fucking amazing. I mean, I'm going to put clips in for this episode. I don't normally feel right about just clipping stuff, but I feel like people need to hear some Bobby for us, them to really be able to get what's going on here. But aside from like how ridiculous it sounds, that's something that plenty of the chaos magic community, hell, even some of the regular occult community would agree with. Isn't it? A, I think it's a Crowley quote, something about how the Goetia represents aspects of the human consciousness. And that's all Bobby's saying. He's saying it in a fun way that will get you to listen though. The, or the, the Peter Carroll, every pantheon represents a right, psychic. Exactly. It's the same thing. Now. I think that it's very interesting to note that he, he really does emphasize the num the sheer number, the amount of, you know, the, this idea of like your head is so big, big enough to contain all the gods and demons, you know, all that sort of thing. Uh, it's, it's really a fascinating thing to imagine. Could you like imagine the scope of your mind? If there are truly 144 million demons in there that you, you, you're not even aware of. And I, I think in a weird way, I think a lot of times people will go like, oh yeah, yeah. Like the, you know, a demon is like a, an aspect of your brain, but you don't think about the full implication of what the Goetia lays down of like it, this, he, this guy commands 50 legions of hell and you know, each legion is 10,000 or something like that. So it's like, think about the sheer magnitude that we're talking about with this, you know, especially, you know, when you've been in chaos magic, in particular in a while, when you hear crazy stuff like that, it doesn't quite hit you in the same way. Cause you're like, oh yeah, that's well, just one particular paradigm of any thousand of them. But he's really giving you something that makes you feel empowered in a way. The idea that if, if you just start paying attention to this shit, you just start looking at these, you have the legions of the underworld in your fucking head, ready to command. It's right there for the taking. You just got to do it. And it's, it's, you know, cause on, again, on one level, it's absolutely hilarious to hear yeah. him yelling that <laughs> it's so funny. It's so fun. It's just great. And then on, but on the other level, it hits you and you hear somebody going, I'm going to make this sip malt liquor simple for you. I'm going to break this down. And then he's like, you got 72 motherfuckers <laughs> in your head. It's like, yeah, what is this? But then it's, you know, if you stop and really process it, it's like, Hmm, that's, that is a, a. If that is a position you wanted to take, it's a very powerful Definitely. one. Definitely. It's a very fascinating Definitely. one. All right, what else we got here? And they don't understand that ye are gods. Is it not written in your law that ye are gods? John chapter 10, verse 34, 37. And the scriptures cannot be broken. We fell into the physical realm and we were the gods of the prior universe. In that same revelations, it tells you that the ones that will be raised up were slain before the foundation of the earth. Then I gave you these several stories about the Titans that was over, think, and I told you that Tiamat was overthrown. Well, in that same Bible, revelation. Okay, so he, he brings in a lot of different myths there, as he always does. 
he talks about the Titans being slain and Tiamat being slain and and talking about the fact that the, that we fell into this physical realm and that we were slain before the foundation of the earth, essentially ascribing humanity as being godlike beings who had the, a fall, you know, very yeah, Gnostic. That's exactly what you know, you, we fell from, we fell from our, our place of prominence and we can be raised back up. And then he also does what we did earlier in this episode where we used Christianity <laughs> to make a point about another thing, yeah. you know? So, uh, cheers to yeah, you, Bobby. He's, he just goes off for a minute about this idea and it's, you know, it's like, I, you have to think about the context in which he's speaking too, right? He's talking to, you know, ultimately like, you know, a marginalized group of people that has to be some of the most empowering shit you've ever heard in your life. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Especially on a, an esoteric level or the idea of like ascribing a, a, a spiritual power to a group and telling them, and it's like, they're, they're trying to keep you down. They're trying to, to force you beneath the boot heel but understand that you are the divine being and that the, the, your enemies are, you know, your, I, I guess the Gnostic thing would be like, yeah, you're, you're battling against the archons, man. There are the authorities of this world that will try to keep you down, but they can't beat you if you realize that you're from the source. Definitely. It's very much that sort of thing, which is you know, super great. And it's, the, just the, the absolute power that this man has when he talks is, you know, this guy can make a whole room stand up at, you know, with a right, word. Right, right. And like I said, you know, a lot of it, a lot of it seems very goofy in a lot of ways. And a lot of you people will probably be very much like Bobby just talking some wacky fucking shit. Yeah, y'all be, a lot of y'all probably be tuning out <laughs> to this already, but like, really. No, but at the same time, uh, this, this clip is, uh, really lacking in a super quotable line. I can't say malt liquor simple <laughs> or, uh, you know, or, uh, Marcus Garvey ascended master, you know, like none of the, the that. So that would be my one critique of this. <laughs> All right. What else we got? You know, quit comparing yourself to whether you look like other people or what other people have and fall in love with self. There's something about you that you like about yourself. Take that and magnify it. You know what I'm saying? You might scratch your behind a certain way and you go, man, I do that shit good. But whatever it is. <laughs> okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back this up. Is, okay. You just got to put that, that whole, whole clip in there. That, that whole, whole clip's clip going in. in there. Scratch Dude, your behind. Bobby. And magnify it. It's, you're, you're familiar with the Buddhist concept of expedient teaching, correct? Um, for the, our listeners who might not be, there's a, a concept in Buddhism, specifically Mahayana is very big on it. And it's the idea that the guru or the Buddha specifically, depending on what you're going with, the enlightened being does not necessarily give you the full truth or something that even can constitute truth in any sort of way. Because the guru or the Buddha or the enlightened being is not trying to tell you the full picture right from the get-go. What they're trying to do is have expedient methods to bring you to enlightenment. That is exactly what Bobby just did right there. He's giving you a very simple message. He's just yeah. trying to get you to, to love yourself and have positive feelings towards your own being and who you are. And, you know, like I said, if he's willing to tell you, like, you might scratch your ass in a nice way that you're like, oh, I like that. And if that gets you there, then fucking great. We need more of that, especially in occultism. A lot of people just want to fucking give you like the whole cosmological picture of their ideas and tell you the whole fucking universe is like this. We need a lot more of just scratching your ass and being like, see that, that there's a, there's a profound truth in there. <laughs> Honestly, I think we just need less what we, <laughs> we need less teachers and we need yeah, more Bobby. Damn straight. <laughs> yeah. There's always going to be loads of people that are going to tell you how you should be doing something or the, like, this is the way or there are loads of people that really want to give you their opinion on something and have their long diatribes. But the problem is, is that most of them aren't half or a third or a quarter as entertaining or as right to the fucking, uh, to the very marrow of the issue as someone like Bobby Hemet. <laughs> These are people that are pretentious. These are people that would never say scratch your ass and find enlightenment. Definitely. Okay, next What's one. What's this one? This is 
Bobby, it just says Bobby Emmett dropping knowledge. So let's see what he has to say. He dropping it. The mistress of alchemy. So the alcohol is the ultimate aspect of, of alchemy, which alchemy is also taking something in an original state and making something new out of it. And that's what fermentation is. And in so many words, that is what the whole Christ thing is. You know, I am the wine and I am the vine. That whole concept and all. Remember, the, 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 the root of the word Christ just simply means your soul. Has nothing to do with no black person or white person running around 2,000 years ago. The word Christos, if you study this for most of it, we only got the religious aspect and stuff, aspect of the Christos, which is, a, which is uh, but might I add, Greek. I'm trying to find out why the Christians never found another name, even in Hebrew, that they wanted to deal with. When they talk about the Christos, they had to deal with the Greeks. But then again, they even call the Greeks pagans. But the Christos on the metaphysical... Whoa, okay, there's so much that just went into that last one. I, I loved I loved the music in the background. Okay, yeah. Well, that's the other <laughs> that's that the other thing we okay, should talk so, about real quick so what before I got, we say anything about the video. Bobby Hemet ends up in so many goddamn hip hop things. It's fucking insane, and you can see why because if you need like a thirty second quote that just sounds like fucking crazy shit that's gonna blow somebody's mind, just find any Bobby Hemet video and just pick any random section of it. It's you have a nine times out of ten that you're going to pull a banger out of that. Okay, it started with alcohol is the essence of alchemy because words sound alike, so obviously it makes sense. Uh, but the idea of taking something and making something new out of it, and that is fermentation. And then he says that really that fermentation is the essence of the Christ myth. He doesn't explain that because he gets a little lost talking about the etymology of the word Christos. Yeah. But the idea of Christ, Christ is your soul and that sort of thing. And uh, now maybe the idea is that the fermentation is the is the formula of the dying and resurrected God, which would also equate to Osiris. Now, I'm doing Bobby Hemet's job for him at this point, but I'm sure he's already thought of that cuz he's a <laughs> genius. But uh I guess this one's a little funny because like he very clearly gets off his off his track for a second and then it cuts out way too quick where he doesn't get to finish it. And I really need to find the rest of this lecture to figure out if I'm right or not. God, you got to love it though. You got to this man has such energy too. He just bounces through this whole thing. Just he doesn't stop at all. It's like he goes off. You know when you're having those uh those magic manic moments where everything is connected? It's where every little every little thing is a synchronicity and you can relate it to something else. So when you're trying to explain it, you're going off on these tangents. That's what it sounds like. Hats off to him for it. Cause that was fucking oh, man, great. Yo, that's Christ. The, the, the point of Christ is crystallizing. He even has a whole fucking thing about like, yeah. you know, I don't understand why the Christians couldn't find a Hebrew word for this. They have to go with the Greek word Christos. Yeah. And it's, you can yeah. tell that that's yeah. just an actual it's, it's, problem that Bobby had that he had to tell you about. He's like, I'm not sure about this one, but maybe some of you in the audience can help me yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe I'll, maybe I'll figure out the answer or something like that. It's like, especially cause they'd be calling the Greeks pagans. It's like, shit. All right, Bobby, you're, 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 you're on fire right now, man. Go for it. I, I really do need to find the rest of that because I need to know <laughs> if I'm right about why fermentation is the Christ myth. <laughs> And, but, but just to pull it back, right. In a weird way. Right. Cause we're, you know, we're, we're having a good time with this. We're, we're, we're overblowing Bobby and simultaneously telling you that Bobby actually is a fucking brilliant guy. You know, people will laugh at this. People will be like, Oh, it's that Hotep shit. When Carl Jung says that sort of shit, you guys perked right the fuck up. You're like, Oh yes. Christ is in the alchemy myth. When, mm -hmm. when fucking Heidegger or Derrida comes at you with mm -hmm. weird etymology that you're like, I don't think that's actually how that works at all. You got people in academia perk the hell up. But when you got Bobby Hemet here doing it, you want to laugh about it. Just saying, yeah. just saying, you know it's, what? A, you make it's, a, a good, it's a thought. Good point. Good point. I've never got to see Carl Jung give a speech, but I don't think he has half. The oh, hell no. I saw him that. in that one interview and he looks tired and bored as fuck. <laughs> Bobby Hemet didn't fuck his patients. <laughs> well, we don't know that. Bobby might have gotten some play in the audience. You don't know. And, and no, he, no, he was married, so I'm pretty sure he's probably good. Next one. This one's called The Great Mother and Son. What happened was, 
you had the ancient draconian or typhonian tradition. This was before Egypt came into being. Time out. Time out. What? What? You, you had the what? what with the, the what? Who? Bobby Hammond is dragging what the Bill. What? what, what? <laughs> As they came out of that, you had the ancient draconians that were still worshiping the mother and the son. Oh my God. This man is dragon pilled and he is, he is talking about the draconian typhonian order. Holy shit. This is, I did not expect this. This is a revelation. We just made the comparison and to Kenneth Grant. He's right there. Holy shit. It we makes saw perfect five sense. seconds of this video. <laughs> Oh, my. oh, Bobby Hammett. Oh, oh brother Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> oh, my God. Tell us the secrets. Tell us the way. Holy shit. Come on, go. go. The mother being the triple blackness of space that has the sun out of her south gate, the vagina. You see what I'm saying? Which is the first star in heaven, Sirius, which is the God that you know of. But God, the ancient word for God is El. And the word Al also means God, but it means sun. So the God that you worship up there is the sun. That's the God. Yes, that's your father, but he's the son to the mother. The triple blackness of space. So you had a group of people that was re um, worshiping the dragon and the dog. The dragon means the great mother Typhon. Her dog is the dog star that comes out of her south gate, this vagina. Now, you had the ancient people that was worshiping soot Typhon. Soot, which means the star system Sirius, and Typhon means the triple blackness of space in the constellation of Draco that you get the word draconian cult come from. Y'all with me? Yeah. Now. Y'all with me? Oh, my God. I I'm with you, Bobby. Holy shit. The, the, what? The, 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 oh, the triple blackness boy. of the mother. New eat. And the sun that comes out of her south region, the vagina. The vagina. Yeah. Like, you can totally understand. You know, it, you, it really makes you wonder, like, did he get this? Did he straight up get this from Kenneth Grant? Or is this like, did he come up with this no, shit? No, he got this from this. No, he got this from the, from the source, man. Or you can, he tapped into the draconian current. He's tapped into the typhonian current. That is him and Kenneth Grant have the same ideas because they got it from the same place. That is the dog star series. I, mean, I don't want to keep going back to this point, but when Robert Anton Wilson comes to you talking about Sirius, you guys all perk up. But when you hear Bobby talking about it, you're like, what the hell is this guy talking about? You guys need to be in love with Bobby Hammett right this fucking second. What the, fa I'm just saying the fact that, uh, like, Bobby, are you, do you really mean to tell me Bobby Hemet doesn't have a single fucking book? I'm looking. I, I can't find them. You know, it's, it's absolutely insane, right? Like, you know, I get it. He was selling videos and stuff like that, but it's a weird thought to think that this dude was just out there trying to teach people about this shit. You let him fucking get, get up anywhere. He's going to come rock your fucking local recreation center. <laughs> this, this man is just going, and again, the, the the fiery passion that this man has when he talks oh boy just chef's kiss no notes <laughs> i've never seen this one so the minute he started going draconian typhonian order and i'm like yeah mind what? blown dude what all right let's see let's watch the rest of this you see what i'm saying because they worship the mother they became the devil and everything in the feminine principle on down the lineage up to now has been evil. Even in your damn Bible, which is one of the most sexist doc documents on the planet that is forced, that is, that is made the sexism the way it is. A lot of brothers document them, they do a lot of brothers document them not trusting women and women is evil based on the fucking Eve story, which is the most horrible story in the world. This is the temple of God, Solomon's temple. Solomon is, oh yeah, I am black and comely. Solomon's temple is, this is Solomon's temple. The temple of God is your body, right? Now, who is the master builder? The woman, because she has the baby. Yeah. So ain't no fucking thing as a, white, as a man being the master mason. Yeah. Now, unless he can have a baby, he's no master mason. There's only one master mason, and that's the woman. Yeah. That's the real deal mystery school. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. She builds the autonomy of the body of God. 
the autonomy of the body of God. She builds the, the temple. She builds the tree of life in the Holy Kabbalah. She has it. But they cut that out and don't show you that. You see what I'm saying? This, the tree of life, see, means this is God supposed to be right here. She has God. The master mason is the black woman. Where do we even start? <laughs> um, okay. Well, what it turns into is the, the notion of the great mother, the triple blackness of space, uh, the, drag the dragon, the draconian, the typhonian, typhon, you know, as the, uh, the primal goddess, you know, it, it's new eat. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's our lady of yeah, infinite it's, it's space. The, it's Isis who has never been seen by any man. It's Eris as chaos. It's the divine feminine principle, yeah. right? And he says that the, the early, the early religions that came out of the draconian order impose a masculine form upon a, primordial creative principle whatever right and that they turn against those of the draconian order because they still worship the the divine feminine right and he says this is what has screwed up the sexes forever and then he even talks about the bible being one of the most sexist books ever written which is just like <laughs> Okay, yeah, sure, 100%. <laughs> it's crazy. Going, and it makes me even think about the, where he talks about the, they, they castigate them as the, as the, you know, these are the, these people are the worshipers of evil, of the devil. And it makes me think of like the Jordan Peterson, like dragons are the divine, are chaos and also the feminine principle. And it's like every, every symbol of feminism has is, is been negative in our mythologies and all this stuff. And it's like, eh, you don't have that. You, you know, you're, you're making a good point, Bobby. Dude, Bobby, uh, okay. Bobby, kill it. Bobby warning you that someone, some shyster like Jordan Peterson is going to come tell you that the fuck that <laughs> women are evil. <laughs> and this is, and God <laughs> knows when this video was then, made, this has got to have been like the nineties at the, at the latest. Yeah, it had to have, oh boy. And then he even goes into the, uh, the notions of the mat. It's like, who is the master Mason? He's like, well, the body is Solomon's temple. Who builds the temple is the master Mason who builds the temple, who builds the body. That's the woman. Look, again, you <laughs> no. know, for, for you folks that are very big on, you know, your, your various texts, this motherfucker just referenced the anatomy of the body of God. The, and then he, he literally pulls out a copy of weights, Holy Kabbalah. So he can fucking start talking to you about it. Granted, what's he do with it? He's like, check it out. Check out the Sephirotes. They're all these masculine souls, which isn't completely accurate. But then he talks about the, you know, what, yeah. what they don't know is that there's, there's this thing above it all, the, the Ain Soph, which is the, you know, the black mother. You know, the one thing that sticks out to me is uh, the aspirants to the AA are men, but the, the adepts of the AA are all women. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. So even Crowley was already on this idea of, uh, and I understand that what we're saying can be viewed as very gender essentialist and, you know, that sort of thing. But the idea of uh, the, the, bur the, the, the capacity of generation, of, of birthing and that sort of thing as a, a divine principle. And then, and trying to uh, understand that the biological function has an equating with a, a spiritual or a magical function is something that is, is very interesting. And Bobby Hemmett's talking about it here, but Crowley was talking about it, you know, almost a hundred years before that. And then if you believe Bobby or you believe <laughs> Kenneth Grant, they were talking about it well before Egypt was built. The, the thing that I keep coming back to, right, is the system that Bobby has created is nothing short of something that you could cobble together out of a chaos magic perspective. It's taking host of various unrelated ideas and cobbling them together into a system that can work for you. And more importantly, I don't think this is something that Bobby was putting together for himself. Bobby was putting it together for a certain group of people in a culture that fundamentally was against them. It was a culture that is predominantly Eurocentric and white, a culture that is predominantly patriarchal. And what is this man trying to tell you? He's, he's giving you an Afrocentric view of myth. He's giving you a feminist perspective of myth. He's taking these ancient esoteric ideas from mystery schools, and he's taking 
are modern, and I mean modern in like the post Descartes kind of sense, not like contemporary sense. You know, people like Wait and people like Crowley and reappropriating them to a culture that was disconnected from them. And that's fucking beautiful. It is. It absolutely is. All right. What we got next? Ancestors. Oh, this is going to be a fun one. The ancestors, when you build those altars and you feed them, it's not based on worshiping them. What it is is they, they was trapped in a physical body just like we are. Now they don't understand the physical body because they don't understand the world that they've been plunged into because they don't have the physical body anymore. The movie Ghost told you all that. Remember, he, he, he was staying in the house for a while because he still thinking he had the physical body. The man said, you, you're trying to kick that can with your physical hand. Meanwhile, the more and more they get, they get a sense of who they are, then more and more, after they get a sense of who they are, then what happens here is they become stronger and stronger and stronger. Once they become stronger, you can use that power. You can talk with them just like you talking, uh, just like you just like you talking to yourself. And that's another thing too. Start talking to yourself. See, you living in a culture that tells you it's wrong to talk to yourself, but it's good to talk to yourself because you do it anyway. <laughs> or it's just taboo in this society, but you do it all the time. Somebody say, you talking? He said, I, I always say, I'm just singing. Be talking up a song. Um, do we want to say anything about that one? Uh, Lo-fi hip-hop beats to study and chill to Bobby Hammond. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, I mean, that's neat. It's just sort of a, it's an interesting take on the, the, the practice of ancestral offerings and stuff. And then uh, describing these forces of an of your ancestors as a, again, he uses the, the term as a, as an army, you know, the ancestral spirits are a part of you and they gravitate towards you. Uh, and as they become strong, because you, you continually make offerings unto them, they can do things for you, which is neat. I, I, I can't tell if it's like him go, him stopping and sort of being like, Oh, well, uh, when they ask like, well, how, how can they help us in what ways? I don't know if it was a thing of like, he didn't want to like, he didn't want to like say way too much of like what would basically, what's basically describing witchcraft or if it was like a shit, I ain't <laughs> thought about that yet. <laughs> it could be either. I Bobby guess. ain't perfect. Obviously. Um, I do find the thing of talking of, uh, you mentioned talking to the ancestors and then he says, talk like you can talk to them like you're talking to yourself. And that's another thing. You should start talking to yourself, which is, it gave me a chuckle. And then he shut me up where it's like, they, cause you know, cause you're going to do it anyway. It's just taboo. You're living in a culture that tells you not to talk to yourself, but it's good. You need to have that rapport with yourself. That's an interesting thought. I can draw the parallel of you're going to, of you can't help, but do magic <laughs> anyway. So maybe, maybe it's the same thing. It's like, you're going to talk to yourself anyway. Might as well be conscious and aware of how you're talking Being the, to yourself. The, the Dreyfus student that I am, the minute he said, what was it that it's a practice that you can do that I was already on board. I was like, ah, oh, he's talking about practices and he's right. It's an, it's a practice. If you involve yourself with the ancestral spirits, you know, and as, as a coyote, I can tell you flat out that like, I don't know if they're real or not. I don't really care if they're real or not, as long as I get the result out of it, but it's a practice that can render something intelligible drink <laughs> and it's 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 some interesting shit like i i just can't stop but i can't help but keep going back to this it's like bobby hemmett is doing the sort of stuff that a lot of us want to be doing the man starts referencing movies to try and explain magical or spiritual phenomena for god's sakes that's badass <laughs> again you, you guys want some pop culture magic Fucking right there, man. He's telling you like it's like that movie fucking curtain call. It's like ghost. Like that shit's fucking awesome. Ugh. Okay. Can I take a piss oh. real quick? Yeah, go ahead. All right, two seconds. Look, I, I I don't know, listeners. I just I I think that the way this podcast is going, it's just I need somebody who is gonna want to do the real work, you know, not this like ha ha. Bobby Hemet's so funny, and uh, I, I I looked at the headlines for ten seconds. I want somebody who is uh, going to be able to keep up with me as a one a comedic powerhouse, but also 
a incredibly knowledgeable and uh, learned practitioner, and I, I just don't think he's got it in him. I think maybe he did at one point, but you know his best years are behind him at this point, and it's it's sad. But maybe the best thing is just to put him out the pasture. You know, there's other people. I just want to let him down easy about it. I have changed the password to all the RSS sites <laughs> and the main <laughs> website. Your move. I will, I will kill you in your sleep. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay. All right. Professional <laughs> podcasting. <laughs> All right. Here. Let's look at Bobby talking about myth. So the Greek mythology is the Titans fall. And when the Titans fall by Zeus overthrowing the Titans, they take their blood and make mankind out of it. The Titans used to rule the earth prior to creation. Our earth is built off of several other primal worlds that existed prior to creation. The fabric of those primal worlds was broken down and made into the earth and made into humans. The Babylonian mythology, you got the goddess Tiamat, who is destroyed by her children. Her body is destroyed and makes the earth and the fabric of the universe. Her husband, King Goo's body is destroyed and makes man. So you get the word king, the word king comes from the word kingu. Kingu, uh, which means in order to have a, be a king, you have to have melanin in the blood. Kingu, or salma. Salma, these words for melanin. Get the word salma if you go to India, it's salma. And when they overthrew them, the children took their energy, their essence, and made mankind out of it like by trapping the melanated essence into physical slowed down vibratory form, which is the human body. Every single mythology has this. It's in the, uh, it's in the coffin text, the spiritual. Well, Ra is the sun. That sun outside there is a trick sun. Hell, there's been reports that it don't even shine when you leave the atmosphere. It don't even shine out in space. Out in space, they say so black, you, gotta, you can't even see your fucking hand. You figured it'd be daylight out there. It's closer to the sun. You see what I'm saying? That sun makes the matrix possible. That's what I'm famous for. You see, that's how I can get to be a buffoon. Because I document heavy. You see, so I can show my ass and tell y'all my, my, my TM, what they call it? TMI, too much information. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. TMI, like how I ain't had no fucking heat all summer. <laughs> You learn how to take cold showers, you don't have to pay no heating bill during the summer. And I'm not doing this because I'm cheap. I'm very elaborate. When I get money, I spin it up. Buy real expensive shit. You know what I'm saying? I just, you know, just, you know, I'm the brokest man in the Western Hemisphere. So, uh, you know, so every, every, every summer they come and roll and cut my damn heat off. Well, pause it. Bobby just broke the secret to us, didn't he? That's how I get to be a buffoon. That's how I get to be because I because I document heavy. I fucking love that man. Because I mean I won't play the whole clip, but I'll tell you folks he's he's telling you that the 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 sun don't shine out in space, and that that's what allows the matrix to exist, and that the 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 the, the old gods. The gods that we worship now are the children of us because, well, not us, because we're not melanated individuals. And he's talking about Soma being melanin, and I don't agree with a single word of it. That's all ridiculous. But that's just a paradigm that he's in. And I, I fucking love it. But but that's that's exactly how he well, works. He he just told you the, the minute, minute he want you want he starts telling you some crazy stuff like that. He's like, hang on, I got the bibliography right here. Write shit down. <laughs> <laughs> like I could really I could literally watch these all night. So uh, <laughs> you know, and I'll I'll be saying the same thing over and over again at this point too. Of like, just man. This this is a this is a great orator. <laughs> this man is so above and beyond. Like I <laughs> I wish half of the spooky woo woo people 
Uh, I wish I was half this good. Right, yeah. You know? Peter Carroll ain't got nothing on this shit. Sadly, he doesn't. <laughs> I, I got to say it. You know, we've, um, we've talked a whole lot of good stuff for Bobby. So this is the moment where we talk bad about him. Bobby Hammett don't know what the fuck he's talking about sometimes. Bobby Hammett don't know <laughs> what the fuck he's talking about sometimes. But it doesn't matter because Bobby Hammett gives you an amazing lesson in occultism. If the people you're talking to don't have any of this knowledge, you can imprint whatever message you want out, out of it. And that's a very dangerous thing that a lot of you people need to remember when you're studying all these people, whether it's Crowley, whether, whether it's Carol, whether it's Waite, whether it's Plotinus, whether it's the people that wrote the fucking PGM, whether it's the fucking Sefer Yetzera. Remember, the minute you have some esoteric knowledge, the minute you have something to show people that could open their mind to different things, they can put in the wheat with the chaff and you will not be able to separate it unless you develop some discernment. That's why we can sit here and tell you that Bobby Hemet is a brilliant fucking person, even though half the time he don't know what the fuck he's talking about because he knows just enough, just enough to show you that he fucking knows something. I'd say on a, a more positive note too, the man is a, a great lesson in the idea of taking the things that are relevant to the, the narrative or the paradigm that you're trying to build for the purposes of, whether it's the purposes of uh, getting a, a, a cool $500 for your lecture or if it's to put together a working or to try to alter your particular reality tunnel is that there is much to be said about finding the relevant parts, bending them, switching them around, making them fit the way that you need them to fit and not being hung up on the idea of uh, an objective truth that you're desperately trying to get to because it's not there. It's just not. So by all means, get on that dragon pill Typhonian order from beyond the, uh, the original building of the world and, and talking about how uh, you are the God that was swallowed up by Ra Le and that you are, a, you are going to escape this world of matter. Legit. Just, just go for it. And I mean, again, and if you're half the fucking orator Bobby Hemet is, you're you're gonna you're, you, you get, get some, some fans. fucking fans. If we could talk like fucking Bobby does right now, we wouldn't be doing this podcast. We'd be out there on stage telling y'all the secret. Well, maybe it would benefit if we put some chilled out lo-fi hip hop in the background of Ooh, the podcast. I have an idea. <laughs> so what I'm telling y'all is the original man. It's not just the image of the gods. It is the image of the goddess. And inside you are the spheres of the tree of life. And there's, there's at least 10 of those. And all 10 of them contain multitudes and armies. A whole world, a whole platoon of various forces ready to do your bidding and your will upon the earth. But the man, the man himself, has told you multiple times. You know, we always use that. We always say, the man's keeping me down. Why is that? It's because the masculine is a naturally oppressive force and it's only the reconstitution of the feminine principle that keeps you from being brought down into tyranny. Please take all of my money. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, do we want to hear the rest of this? Um, here, play a okay. little more of it. This particular concept here is, it talks about Ra comes into existence by overthrowing Apep. Apep, or Aphophis or Apep, is the great mother. Tiamat is the great mother. So the great mother was overthrown. The great mother had a host of both female and male in, in, in now this is a great mystery that you gotta understand about the black man. The black man is the only person 
that is both male and female. I'm not talking homosexuality. I have to preface that. Preface that. The black man is the only person on the planet that's both male and female. The kundalini energy inside of you is a feminine energy. You're the only person on the planet that has ever, in the history of the planet, that's ever been vilified, scorned, and chastised based on your sexuality. Sexism is a part of your life just as it is the black woman. That's because ultimately that's the feminine force that's, that's, that's inside of you, which is the kundalini energy. So that realm... <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Can I can I comment on this? You want to? I was almost I was gonna honestly go like, man, let's just move on, but I you I say just want something cuz go I'm going to clip it. the the relevant part there. This shows you the bad side of Bobby Hammett hardcore, doesn't it? It absolutely does. We were singing his praises and now well, that's it's why like, we had to, nope. We had to nah, break man. the fucking we had to break the illusion for you folks. Cuz this is the shit that yeah, cuz this is like the shit I hate to say it, like, this is the sh the Bobby Hammett shit that is just like, mm, yeah, we all, yeah, we, we knew this was coming. Like, this stuff is still, I still think this stuff is funny, you know, like, because he's just well, going on no, about, like, you know. I, 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 I used the word before for you folks, so I'm going to tell you now. That what we did was a, a method of expedient teaching. <laughs> we wanted you, we wanted to open your eyes to the idea that you could find something of value in these things that seem completely ridiculous and completely outside of any respectable quote unquote esotericism. But now we have to give you the grim hard truth of Bobby Hemet has some really interesting stuff that you can find and dig out the gems from the muck. Just like you can anybody. Remember that. If if this exercise has taught you anything. It's that you can find the gems in the muck of almost anything. But this is just Bobby telling you all sorts of stuff about how <laughs> the black man is the only one who is both male and female, but he's not talking about homosexuality. Ugh. It's, and and, the, and uh, the, the melanated people are the only ones that have been chastised for their sexuality, which is, you know, like I said, it's just, it, what it shows is the general issue of alternative sexualities and gender within the african-american community but that's not my it's not my place to talk on that but i am totally gonna i'm no, totally gonna clip is. that part where he says you know the only one who's male and female i'm not talking, not talking about, about homosexuality not talking homosexuality and it's like mm, yep, yep, yep there it is like we said there remember remember folks that as we said before, if you're a very powerful orator and you know just enough, you can, you can have some influence. And what I really mean when I tell you that is don't be taken in by people that are really great speakers. Don't be taken in by people that have really interesting ideas because you can find brilliant gems in anybody. So with that, we're going to go on to our favorite thing. This is Bobby Hammett talking about the book of the law. Uh, what happened was you had the actual uh, uh, the God turning into angels. Those angelic forces. So what I'm talking about is an actual God, a particular God who is a very God. Of I didn't bring as many books as I did this time, and I didn't need them uh, because I, the book that I constructed, uh, which I have on sale today, some of them I have. I got about 25, 26 copies, but I have some more copies tomorrow. Book that I, I, I put together based on different um well I edited the book really and I put the book together my book's on sale based today on different sciences that I had on this particular mm -hmm. God that is on the scene. So there uh, is a book the and um when I put this book together I got most of the notes and stuff in here that I'll be coming from and I do have this book. He um, put them together I though, he's just kinda like constructing thing. books. Well we have got he didn't write this. Started. Which 
Arthur Schoenberg. 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 Arthur Schoenberg.
There you go. The government shut out Sun Ra and killed him, apparently. Um, I'd believe it. <laughs> Kept people from I mean, Sun Ra fucking lived to be pretty fucking old from what I remember. It's very true. I mean, he lived to be 90. He just said it. Government killed him when he was 90. Goddamn. The God Awas. All right, family. The the Ark and the Covenant is the setup of the World War Three that the white boy <laughs> made his setup for. I'm sorry, folks. I feel bad if you thought we were being 100 percent serious about Bobby Emmett and then knew about this already. Oh uh, yeah, we might have given the wrong impression. Um, but I mean, it's also uh, you know. We, we, we gotcha again. Gotcha again. I mean, and this is the, cause this is like the, this is the part. These are parts of Bobby Hammett that are very funny because he's absolutely nuts. Yeah. I mean, it's fucking crazy. But like yeah, I said, you know, there's, there, there's gems in the muck. There's interesting things going on here, but then, you know, you got stuff. You got, the majority of it is like this. All right, I'm going to cut to like down here to like an hour in. Oh. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry about this, but I got to. You're good. Melanin okay. is memory. Find a good part yet. <laughs> a tall, dark man. 
you missed the whole portion where he. You missed the whole portion where he basically recounts the entire writing of the book of the law. And he reads directly from Crowley's quotes. What's he say? I mean, is it any no, good? It's, is it it's like, exactly does he get like, any details no, he, wrong? It's, that's the thing about Bobby. He, he gets things completely right. It's just how he frames them that fucks it all up. Crowley didn't have no melanin. Well, no, God he talks it. about how um, melanated beings can reincarnate themselves in whatever form. And he talks about, obviously, this person had melanin because they were in on the spiritual secrets and yada, yada. Oh, what kind of... What kind of cop yeah. out is that? You can be melanated without being melanated as long as you're a spiritual thing. Technically, if you're a human, you yeah, have melanin. I mean, that's that's the goofy that's, part that's, of all of this. Oh, just that one part. What do we want to say about Bobby? Um, Bobby be absolutely buck wild. When he's amusing, he's amusing. When he's absolutely insane, he's absolutely insane. And uh, like you said, there's definitely jewels and all this yeah muck. he's occasionally insightful and bobby hemmett gives you a moment to look at the kind of ideas you have about esotericism in the world from a completely different perspective and when he's wrong he is bigoted anti-semitic sexist, sexist. yeah it's weird that it's like even when he's so very pro-feminist he's still Ends up sexist. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah homophobic. homophobic. All, pretty much all the isms that you would be like, that is fucked up. You can attribute to Bobby in some kind of way. When he's great, he's great. And no one can take away from the fact that he is a brilliant speaker. He's very fun and entertaining. Oh, yeah. He's one of those people that can trick you because you can get really wrapped up with how entertaining he is and then start listening to his ideas. I'm going to, oh, yeah. in fact, I'm going to put that Hyatt quote in right now. Uh, I, uh, I attended a number of his lectures, and he was a very brilliant and a very sweet man, and I admired him in a lot of ways. But like all good speakers, he knows how to mix metaphor with facts, and people love that. If you can learn how to mix metaphors with facts, you can sell anything. You can do anything. Oh, yeah. yeah. I. I still stand by that. I think Bobby Hemet is massively entertaining. Massively. Uh, I will still be saying the black God set or soot, the blue black God of Krishna self begotten set <laughs> Typhon and Osiris, who was the original black man, you know, all of that. And now I've got some more fun sayings like uh, I'm going to make this sip of malt liquor simple. We thank you all for taking this ride with us of Bobby Hemet. We hope you learned something. What did we learn? Something about scratching yep. your ass? You gotta love yourself because you might be really good at scratching your ass. And with that, it, it's time for <laughs> the most wonderful, <laughs> wonderful part of this. Our palate cleanser. How goes the work? I've been scratching my ass. <laughs> and I love myself. I've been doing magic work to to magnify the concentration of melanin in my skin. <laughs> uh, if we're not even going to give you guys a serious one, how goes the work? This episode's already going to be way too long anyway. This has been Chaos Magic News, the only podcast that gets to act like a buffoon because we <laughs> document heavy. As always, if you got 72 motherfuckers in your head, all with legions of 200,000, you can probably get them all to listen to this podcast. And God, do we need the listeners? Yes, please. If you do enjoy this show, you should uh, highly, highly recommend it to all of your friends and or loved ones. You can find us at chaosmagicnews.com where we'll have links to the pod, articles, interviews with some of the most fascinating people not bobby hemmett unfortunately and pretty much anything else you could ever want from us we're on social media at chaos magic news on twitter instagram and facebook and other than that kotap would you like the last word Ashem. <laughs> Ashem. all right folks thank you for listening we will see you next time bye-bye
Oh my god, why did we do this? This is rough. This is gonna be so hard to edit.